In amongst this bustling mass of biceps and triceps, I've got a 100-game player, Anthony Franchina, the first person in the history of the Carlton Football Club to play 100 games wearing the number 45. Anthony, I know your parents are huge Blue supporters and you've been a Blue supporter all your life. What does it mean to achieve such a milestone? Uh, it's a childhood dream, really. Um, came down when I was about six, seven, eight, and came down to off the save, watch all, the, all, my, all my idols like Kernhand and Battles and that. Manton? Yeah, Manton down there in 95. Remember you, Mance? Still do remember you. How was my hair back then? Long and curly, I think. Is that true? That's uh, very true. Some people said it looked like a dead cat on my head. Now, Anthony, biceps and triceps obviously play a huge part in your life, and if, if we can actually go to a wide shot to try and fit that tricep in, how much time would you just put into the gym? In fact, your whole training regimen, how much time per week does Anthony Franchina put into his football? Ooh, it's a big question. Um, maybe five minutes a day on my biceps. Five whole minutes? Five whole minutes. And that's just straight up reps or your pyramid? What's your, what's your usual routine for your biceps? Just a normal bicep curl. One curl? One curl for five minutes. Well, you heard it here first, folks. If you want to get big and uh, nasty like Anthony, one slow curl over the course of five minutes and you'll get these little puppies on your arm. I'll tell you what. He's a bustling mass of muscle. Now, Anthony, your hair's all obviously a huge part of your life, as it has been in mine. What sort of product are you putting in your hair, and is it true you are actually addicted to product? <laughs> Must have product. If it doesn't, it um, just blows up in a massive boof. The support of the players behind him. French knocks it down. The step from French. And there's a goal. Carlton answer. Pretty uh, lame performance here by the Melbourne defence. It was an interesting tap, almost looked like a throw out to Franchina. We'll have another look at it. <laughs> it's an interesting one, but who cares? Franchina's banged it through. And she was a goal. He was uh, unattended. And he comes back to players slipping over. Anthony, what does the future hold for Anthony Franchina? Hopefully, play another 100 games. That's uh, the goal, so. Where will you find yourself playing, though? You've been tossed around a bit this year, a bit, of a, a bit of a salad job. Where will you find yourself in the next couple of seasons? Do you think you'll consolidate down back or on ball? Where would you like to play? Probably on ball, but um, if the team needs us down back, I'd just go down back. It what, what depends what the coach wants. What about slipping up forward? Because I know you've had a lot of uh, success being a pinch hitter up forward. You've taken a few good grabs and kicked a few goals. How, actually, how many goals would you have kicked in, in a short period of time up at, in the forward line? Probably 30 odd. Not much. 30 is a good effort, mate. Nothing wrong with kicking 30 odd goals. How many goals you kicked, man? I've kicked about 30 odd goals, Franger. Yeah. I've only played up forward twice, so that's pretty good, averaging about 15 a game. So it's not bad over my course of my career. That's a good effort. Yeah, it is a good effort. Thanks very much. Now, I can, room, I can uh, tell people at home that I actually room with Anthony on the road. He's a very, very fastidious person, very much in, in routine and uh, doesn't like to see anything in the room become messy or stolen or in any way, shape or form disorganised. Anthony, let's cut to the chase, the truth. You've been known to slip the old hotel pillow into your bag. What the hell are you doing with 400 hotel pillows at home and, and what's the plan? That's not true, Glenn. All I do at hotels is bring my... PS2 or Xbox, have a bit of games, bit of fun with the boys, and um, there's no way I'd take pillows from the, any hotel room. Well, it's a point of contention, folks. Jared White stamps himself on the game! Franchina finishes it, and the Blues have got another on the board! Anything to say to the folks at home? Um, no. Man, a few words. Peace. Welcome back to Planet Blue. One of the, uh, I guess, more esteemed positions around the Carlton Football Club is that of boot stutter. And here's our current boot stutter, Frank Finn. Say hello to everyone at home, Frank Finn. How do you do, one and all? <laughs> I said just to say hello. Try again, Frank. How do you do, one and all? <laughs> just say hello, Frank. Hello, boys and girls. Just say hello, Frank. Hello, Frank. Excellent. We got the gag out eventually. <laughs> now, it's not easy being Frank, but let me tell you, back in the days, and if we can come for a little walk with me, Budge, if you wouldn't mind, back in the olden days, 
being a boot stutter wasn't quite so simple. In fact, in the early 1950s, the Carlton Football Club employed a midget called Harold to do the boot studding duties. Now, unfortunately, they found out after a, a series of bad losses that Harold was actually skimping on the nugget. They took him out, as was the case back in those days, put him in front of the boot room and basically lined him up in the firing squad. And in a bloody death, Harold met his demise. Now, if we can just pan down to the wall, that's the result. Poor old Harold put against that wall and shot to pieces. So if we can pan back to Frank, and I'll just commentate over the top of it. Frank, lift your bloody game, champ. This week at Carl.